Let me start by asking you a simple question. Do you use a commercial CSS framework for your Bricks Builder websites? If you do, let me know in the comment section down below. You don't need to tell me what you use, just let me know if you actually use one. And the second part of this is, let's take a look if we actually still need those commercial CSS frameworks. So we're gonna take a look at a couple of methods in which we can utilize the newer version of Bricks 2.2 at the time of re recording this video, which is still in beta at this point in time, but that should be out to full release within the next next week or two anyway. So everything I cover here, while there might be slight differences in the final version, everything we talk about should hold true. So Bricks 2.2 opened up some more options when it comes to working with the framework that we have inside Bricks itself. We don't need to rely upon a third party CSS framework if we don't want to. And if we want to keep things super simple, we could do all of that directly inside Bricks itself. So to access these new features, we simply have a page open and come to the styles tab. And inside there, we've got the new option for colors, typography, spacing, and framework. But let's just jump in. We know about this classes and variables. As you can see, I literally have absolutely nothing on here to start off with. Let's say, first of all, we want to create our color palette. Well, we can jump into the color section and inside here, we can create our new palette. You'll see we already have a default palette which has all these colors, which we're kind of used to seeing as part of Bricks anyway. But I've already created a new palette, which I would just call test palette. And inside here, we have nothing set up. So let's set a couple of colors up and see some of the additional options. So first of all, our primary color. We can type a color value inside here or we can use the color picker. So for this example, let's say I want to go with a blue color. Something like this is a good starting point. We'll click add color, opens these extra options up. We'll come back to those in a moment. Let's come down to the next one. Let's set this up to be secondary. So again, we're going to open this up because we're dealing with blue. Let's choose an orangey color. It's a kind of complementary color to it. So something like this. That's good. We'll add that in. We'll minimize that and we'll add in a tertiary color as well. This is going to be just basically a simple clean color. So we'll go for something like this. This is a really simple color palette and you would expand this with a lot more options and you could deal with light mode and dark mode and so on. So let's just minimize these and take a look at what we're starting off with. So let's target our primary to start off with. Let's click to edit this and inside here we have dark mode, light and dark shades and we have transparent shades. And then we've also got utility classes below. So I don't want to deal with dark mode at this point in time so I'm going to leave that as it is. But if I wanted to set up light and dark shades I can absolutely do that inside here. So I can set my values up. Say we wanted to have dark shades. And these are just sort of your different shades and tints and so on. So we can say we'll have four there. If you want to deal with transparency shades, you can do the same here as well. Set whatever values you want up. So you can set those up. So our colors will all be taken care of. I'm going to disable these because it just adds in an awful lot of extra sort of CSS definitions, which I don't really want in this example. But you can at any point come back and adjust these. We've also got the utility classes. Now, if you don't know what a utility class is, it's basically a CSS class that does a simple, single job. In this example, we've got our background color. So we can use the BG primary as a background color that uses the color we have here, which is our primary color. So you can use those if you want to, same for color, border color, outline color, and so on. All you need to do is just click to enable any of these that you want. So background color, for example, we might say border color, and we want to say fill. So we now have three utility classes to do with our primary color that will reference that, and we can apply these to things like divs, containers, and so on, lots of different use cases. So we could carry on doing this until we get all the colors we want in for our color palette. So our background colors, border colors, anything that we want to sort of set up inside here. For now, though, we'll keep this really simple. Hit save on here. Jump over now into our classes. You'll see inside here we've got those three utility classes for our background, border, and fill. Nothing's been organized inside here, so we could create some organization if we wanted to. So for example, let's say we want to put this into utility classes. We'll save that. And we'll do now is we'll come into all We'll select all these ones and we're going to say to categorize these and pop these into our utility classes. Update is our utility classes organized. So we're already creating a much more organized setup for our CSS framework. Before we move on, let's take a moment to have a message from today's video sponsor, OmniSend. Now, if you're looking for solid email marketing platform for your e-commerce store, look no further than OmniSend. Getting started is an absolute breeze. They offer some of the most affordable pricing on the market, and you can start with their free plan and experience premium features without spending a penny. It's the best quality to cost ratio you'll find anywhere. If you need help, rest assured, with OmniSend's award-winning customer support, you're always a priority. It's available 24-7, 365 days a year, and you'll get a response in less than three minutes, making you feel valued and important. 
Now don't just take my word for it, OmniSend is a top rated platform with unbeatable pricing, powerful features and exceptional support. The reviews speak for themselves. If you're ready to elevate your email marketing game, OmniSend is here to help. You could try OmniSend today and discover why they're the best choice for your e-commerce business with unbeatable pricing, powerful features and exceptional support. Link in the description down below. Next up, let's just jump into, for example, the typography. So inside here, we can create a scale name. So for this example, we'll call this headings I click create. And now we've got a very typical kind of setup for how we want to handle our typography scaling. So first of all, let's get rid of the prefix. We're going to set this to be H because we're working with headings. We're going to set the type scale in this example to be custom. And what we want to do is you want our headings one through six. So let's just do that. So we'll do H6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. There we go. So H6 through to H1. We can now set up what our minimum and our maximums are. So these are going to be headings. So we probably want to make these bigger. So we'll say 24 and we'll say something like 32 for our minimum on our mobile and our maximum on our desktop. And we can also change our scale ratio. So for example, if we set this to be two or octave, each step will be double the size of its previous one. So you can see there's our H6, H5 is double the size, H4 double the size and so on. So you can customize these to whatever you think works the best for your design. Let's leave that as major third and we'll set this to be major third as well. So we kind of see what we're working with. There we go. Cool. Hit save. And now we can do is we can add another one in. So this time we're going to say we want to add a new scale in. This is going to be typography. This is going to be text. Click on create. So you can see we've got our text and we can set what values you want inside here as well. So we're happy with those values. Well, we can leave them as they are. Generate the variables and click OK. Do the same for our headings and click OK on there as well. And now if we jump back into our variables, you can see there's all of our variables. And as you can see, they're organized automatically for us and everything is using fluid typography. Finally, we can jump into our spacing and inside here we can set up our spacing values. So let's click on create. There's our spacing values. We can set up how we want this to work. So we want to use that small, medium or large, whether you want to create just numeric values or you want something that's custom. I'm going to stick with the T-shirt values in this example. You can see that's showing our spacing. And again, we can set up our base minimum and our base font maximum. So maybe we'll set that to 24. And there we go. So now we can play generate variables, click OK. And if we want to create any utility classes, we absolutely can do. So now we've got our basic setup. We've got our headings our text and our spacing. We've got our colors and we've got everything set up inside there as well. And we've got our typography all set up. So there's the basics of our CSS framework. We can start to utilize these in our design. So let's just save this, jump back into our page. And for example, let's choose our heading. And from there, we can come into our styles and into our typography. And we can now use the font size. So it includes our variables. There's our headings. We can say we want these to be extra large. There's our extra large. So we're using that variable inside there. Cool. Nothing we haven't already seen. Same thing goes for the colors. We can click on the colors. There's our color palettes. So we've got a really simple color palette here. We can say whatever we want to choose from this list. And we can add more in from here if we want to as well. So they are in place, but this is still a very, very limited CSS framework. These are just the basic foundational building blocks. What about when we want to add more things into this? Maybe we want to do things like for rounded corners and for the radius and things like that. And we want to have, again, control over this. And this is where you could use two different methods. First of all, you could find an online CSS generator to handle this for you. And that's okay. There are lots of useful ones out there that'll do this kind of thing. And the same thing goes for your typography, your spacing and so on. You could easily use an online tool to handle all these options. Alternatively, you could turn to something like an AI tool, in this example, ChatGPT. So we can give it some information. So you can see we're basically dealing with the fluid radius utilities. We've put in the base font size and that one rem equals 10 pixels, which we set up inside Bricks itself. So we jump back into Bricks, open up our theme styles, and inside there, under our typography, HTML font size 62.5%. So obviously you need to take this into consideration whenever you're setting things up to make sure you are using the same value structure that you're using inside Bricks, inside whatever tool you're using to actually create those fluid CSS definitions. So let's just grab the code that's being generated. We don't want the root option inside here in these closing and opening parentheses. So we're gonna simply grab this. We have to make sure we grab this first part because that lays out the actual fluid variable, which is being used here. 
So what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy this, head back over into here, open up our styles, and from here we're gonna come into our variables. I'm gonna to choose to import the variables, paste inside, import CSS variables, variables imported nine. Now we come back into our variables, you can see uncategorized, there's our fluid options inside there. So now what we can do is we can create a new category, call this corner radius and hit create. Come back into our uncategorized, grab all of these and choose to categorize them and pop them into the corner radius section and hit update. Now our corner radius has all those radiuses inserted. We'll hit save to make sure that we've committed those and we now have a fluid layout and fluid setup for our corners. So let's come back out of here, come back into our border borders, make sure we've got our container selected and from there come into our border, link these together and open our variables up. There's our corner radius and inside there you can see there's our values. So we'll set this to be large, for example, we now have our corner radius applied. Want to change that to something else? Let's do Excel, for example, there we go. So now we are starting to create our CSS framework. Now obviously this is just one method, this is one way in which you could approach this. If you wanted to use AI like ChatGPT, Claude and so on like I've shown you here, to expand the basics we have inside Bricks for typography, spacing, colors and so on, you absolutely could do. Alternatively, you could use it to create everything and just import those classes, utility classes and variables and so on. Very, very flexible, very easy in how we want to implement these different things. But as always, I do welcome your feedback. Would you use something like ChatGPT or Claude to create a CSS framework that you could use? Would you prefer to create one from scratch yourself? Or are you still gonna stick with your commercial CSS framework? Let me know in the comment section down below. I'd love to get your feedback and your thoughts. As always, all applicable links for everything covered in this video are in the details down below. My name is Paul C, this is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.